I spent today shooting Lapua's new 22LR long range and 22LR super long range rimfire ammo. And in this video, I'm gonna share the results with you. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. Most of you know me as kind of a center fire guy, right? I build center fire rifles here on the channel. I do a lot of center fire shooting and stories, but I'll tell you, these rimfire rifles are really growing on me and they can be highly addictive. So what I did today was we headed up to the ridge line here at Ultimate Reloader. We've got this really great shooting facility up there and we spent the day shooting the Onshoots 1710 competition with Lapua's 22LR long range and 22LR super long range ammo to see what kind of results we would see. And it was totally amazing. Let's talk real quick about the rifle. Onshoots is known for precision and craftsmanship and quality. I've shot my tightest groups with rimfire rifles with Anschutz. And it was, it was really awesome to shoot this rifle today. It's in an XLR Element 4.0 chassis. This rifle has a threaded barrel in case I want to run a suppressor or a tuner. In this case, we absolutely did not need to. Now I've got a full story covering the 1710 competition, and we've used it for testing other lots of ammo and other things. You're gonna to wanna to check out those stories. It's topped off with an Athlon Midas Tac 5 to 25 by 56 scope, which worked really, really good. This is first focal plane. I know what my holder over is gonna be regardless of magnification. And I used a variety of different magnifications during the course of this shooting outing. And what we did was we started at 50, we went to 200, then we went to 336 and then we went to 400 and we had a variety of different kind of shooting situations going on there. So we started at the bench and what I wanted to do was A, get the scope sighted in because I had this on the Onshoots bench rest rifle. That's another story that you're going to want to check out. So I had to get it on here and get it zeroed. It turned out it was almost dead on. So I started with the 22 LR long range. And this right here was my three shot sight in group. Check that out. Three shots went into 0.2445 inches at 50 yards. That's a really good start. When I see that kind of thing from the get go, I know things are good. So I got the scope centered up on this orange dot and I dialed it to move the reticle down and over to the shots. And that got me really close to a good zero. Then I shot three more sets of groups. And while we did this, we were gathering chronograph data. So you can see here, this was after I had dialed uh, on the first target to get my zero established. And that's pretty, pretty close. So five shots went into 0.452 inches at 50 yards. Then I followed it up with another group. So I just did some holdover to bring the shots down into a different group. Uh, and five shots went into 0.353 inches at 50 yards. Now, mind you, the entire day, I've got some pretty crazy heat boil going on through the scope. We've got some mirage to deal with here. And so I had to wait. We also had a bit of wind. The wind was not bad at all. Up there on the ridge line, the wind can get just ripping. Okay, then I thought, let's move up to the super long range. Check this out. Five shots at 50 yards went into 0.187 inches. That feels really good. That is, that is some amazing consistency. This trigger is super, super light. It's two stage. You pull up the slack and then boom, it just goes. It goes predictably, but you're not gonna pull the rifle off target. And I'm thinking about dwell time when I'm shooting rim fire. I'm gonna pull it straight back and I'm gonna hold it straight back until I know the bullet is out of the barrel <laughs> before any movement happens. It's a totally different dynamic compared to center fire shooting. And it's, I'm not an expert at rim fire, but I'm really, really enjoying it. And where I wanna go is some of this NRL 22 and 22 PRS type action. My friend, Seth Gardner from DM Targets, I was just down there at DM Targets yesterday hanging out with him. He's like, you got to go and do this. So that really motivated me to get this rifle out and check out this ammo. Okay, so we collected the SD and the average velocity data with the chronograph using the Caldwell G2 
For the long range ammo, we had an average velocity of 1101 feet per second and the best group, the best SD was 9.1. The other one was a little bit over 10, if I remember correctly. The 22 LR super long range took things to a new level. 1113 foot per second average and a 5.5 feet per second SD. For rimfire ammo, for factory ammo, that is awesome. And when you combine that with a group like this, this was the very first group, the very first five shots I put through the on shoot 1710 competition went into 0.187 inches. And we have that tighter SD. And you might be asking yourself, well, what is the difference between long range and super long range? Basically, the super long range is held to a higher standard. So this is like Midas Plus versus Center X. The bullets are the same in these two, it's a 40 grain projectile. But the super long range, these lots of ammo are going to have a more consistent velocity. And in my testing, which was very limited at 100 yards, I saw better precision as well, better groups with the super long range. So if I had the choice and it really mattered, I would, I would go with the super long range. But honestly, the long range, 0.353 inches for five shots at 50 yards, that is super good. So it's not like long range can't be an excellent, excellent performer. And your results will probably vary somewhat. It's important to state that from the get-go. Different rimfire rifles like different lots of ammo, even if it's the same skew, if it's super long range and it's this lot versus that lot, there can be differences. You know, these, these rimfire rifles are very particular and very finicky with ammo. So when you find a combination or really both of these combinations that work really, really well, you just want to roll with that. I would take either of these types of ammo, hopefully in these lots, to a match with, with this setup. So after we were done at 50 yards, it was time to go to 100 yards. Here's my strategy. I'm going to calculate dope in my ballistic solver, but I'm also going to check the drop at different distances and work my way up to 400 yards was the goal. So then I went to 100 yards. Check this out. Confirming my dope at 100 yards. Three shots went into 0.389 inches. I don't normally see things that tight at 100 yards. Good stuff. Okay, so then I moved things around and I kind of created a new 200 yard steel target range with a gong from DM targets. And this now I'm doubling the distance. A lot can happen between 100 and 200 yards with rimfire ammunition. And that's exactly what we saw. So 50 yard was the zero. The zero was going to be, or the 100 yard dope was a little high. I think they wanted to give me 1.7 up in mils and I ended up at 1.5. That's what you see right here after I corrected it slightly. When I went to 204 yards, that's what that actually worked out to exactly. Uh, I was up 6.1 which was right at where the ballistic solver told me I needed to be. Okay, so now we're on what the, the projected uh, dope was. And then from 204 yards, we went to 336 yards. So this is where we have a particular target, that you've, this, this range you've seen shooting from the ridge line here a few times on the channel. And it can be a difficult uh, distance with the rim fire. With center fire, it's no problem. Kind of do it all, all day long. So I took the DM targets gong, the round gong, and then I set up an actual size rock chuck target. And I thought, I want to get on this rock chuck with multiple shots. And we've got mirage and we've got a little bit of wind that we're dealing with and a switching wind, right? It's not a constant wind. It's kind of, it's going a little bit. You can see it in the mirage and then it's letting off. So I got on the gong, and that was 13.4 mils up at 336 yards. And as I could see the wind switching, I could definitely see the shots going left and right quite a bit. But I was able to get three successive shots in a row on that rock chuck at 336 yards, and that is a real size rock chuck. So a difficult shot with rimfire if you've got these kind of conditions going on, uh, but the, the rifle and the ammo was up to the task. Okay, so then we came down 
off the mountain and we shot from next to the cabin up to the DM targets, coyote target. And it took a few shots to get on target because the dope was not calculated exactly correctly. It looks like I'm at 17, 16.8, 16 uh, 16 mils up. So it was slightly different than what the solver told me. There it is. <laughs> For me, this is a great learning exercise. I'm learning my different ranges. I'm learning what a rimfire wants as we get out to these ELR distances for rimfire. And it is a challenge. The, these, these rimfire bullets do not fly as well <laughs> to 400 yards compared to a centerfire rifle. Not a problem all day long with the centerfire rifle. But depending on what's going on with the wind and with the mirage and these distances, but as any of you know that shoot rimfire at the same distance, rimfire is a much greater challenge. So I'm continuing to get more and more hooked on this stuff. And I'm thinking about having Seth come up and teach us ultimate reloader folks some NRL 22 positional shooting, rimfire goodness, and then going out to a match. So I think that'd be a lot of fun. And if you're looking for a non-shoots rifle, if you're looking for this Lapua, 22LR long range or 22LR super long range ammo, Creedmoor Sports is where you want to go. I just talked to Brent, they're expecting a shipment of this ammo in very shortly. By the time this video publishes, it should be on the shelves. So click on that first link in the video description and I'll have links to go over there. They also stock these Onshoots rifles, which are absolutely a pleasure to shoot, a pleasure to hold in your hand. The quality is absolutely amazing. But regardless of what rimfire rifle you have, this ammo is totally a winner. Uh, might, like I said, depend on the lot. My experience so far, super, super stellar. Here's what I want to know from you is, what are you doing with rimfire ELR? What kind of rifle do you have? What kind of ammo are you shooting? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you want to learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're going to want to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.